Hi guys, welcome to another one of Download Revision series lectures. We are at video 11 and today I've decided to do a little bit on the application of momentum. So momentum is normally touched on in form 3 and in form 4 as we get towards finishing up CSEC, we look at the application of the principle of conservation of momentum. Now momentum is symbolized by common P. It is a vector quantity and it is defined as the product of mass and velocity. So therefore, you will find that one of the units for momentum will be kilogram meter per second. Okay. Now, the principle of conservation of momentum states that for two or more bodies in a collision, the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. So basically, momentum is used whenever you have two or more bodies involved in a collision. Now, a collision could be elastic or it could be inelastic. An elastic collision is where the momentum is conserved and all of the energy is conserved. The only difference between elastic and inelastic is kinetic energy. So you will recall that kinetic energies are dependent on the motion of the body. And normally we, we use an equation as a half mv squared in order to calculate these kinetic energies. So imagine you have a collision and many things can happen in a collision. So if I just consider one body here having a mass and having an initial velocity, right? We symbolize initial velocity with common U. And then let's say that it meets up with, with another body, U2, right? And then they collide and then different things can happen. Let's say M1 goes off in this direction with a velocity V1 and then M2 comes to rest. So many things can play off in an equation, in a collision. And your equation must represent whatever motion is stated in the question. So we wouldn't get into these generic questions because normally when you apply it, you just get the momentum of each body. So in this case, I would have gotten M1, U1 plus M2, U2 would have been my total momentum before they collided. After they collided, well, U, well, M2 would come to rest. So its final momentum would be zero. And then M1 would have traveled in the opposite direction. So then my final momentum would have just been minus M1, V1. Right? So, again, it depends on whatever situation that the examiner has given you. In today's video, I want to focus on a rifle and how it behaves. So, one of the common things that students don't understand is that a rifle ejecting a bullet is an application of the principle of conservation of momentum. So, if you have a rifle and a rifle fires a bullet of mass 10 grams at a velocity of 200 meters per second, if the mass of the rifle is 20 kilograms, how can we determine the recoil velocity? So, here you would assume that your collision is the actual firing of the bullet, right? So I have always worked in SI units, so I would convert the mass of the bullet from 10 grams into kilograms, so it becomes 0 0.01 kilograms. The bullet is moving with a velocity of 200 meters per second. Now, upon ejecting the bullet, you would find that the rifle gets a kickback. So if you, in slow motion, view a person actually firing a gun or a rifle you will notice that they will feel a little as the bullet leaves the rifle or gun they feel a little pushback and that is due to the recoil velocity and the generation of that recoil velocity is from the principle of conservation of momentum so we consider the momentum before the collision as the momentum at which the bullet becomes ejected, mass and velocity, SI units. And of course, if you have the mass of the rifle, the recoil velocity will be the velocity in the opposite direction. So when I worked it down, you would normally have a negative value and it will be using momentum. So my total momentum before will just be the momentum of the bullet which is mv and then well mu anyway and then of the rifle it's mv as well 
right? So then you would work down the velocity to be negative 0.1.